which is the best class to play Tactician on. So, hello everyone, Modern here. In this video, I'm gonna rank every class right in Baldur Gate 3, but especially for playing on the hard difficulty Tactician. Baldur Gate 3 is all about choices, but of course the most important choice is your class right. Your race, not so much. If you're new to the channel guys, my name is Pimondo, right? I'm a game developer, been doing it for many years of my life, and especially, I am focused on combat design, right? So I love doing stuff, discussing classes and so on. I love doing stuff like this. Tier list, min max one. I love this stuff, guys. And if you like the video, please subscribe, slap at the right, leave a comment below what you guys think. We have to share. And I am really interested in hearing what you think about these things. First of all, we will discuss a little bit of the race, right? The best races in the game, to some extent. Then we the classes. But the thing is that I, I definitely hate this video. I will value the class absolutely higher if they're a good early game, okay? Because every class works, you know, at max level and so on, right? To some extent. And I think that it's more important, especially for statistician, how good they're performing early game the most and somewhat mid game. So that's what you really, really struggle. So I'm really interested in hearing what you think about that. Because yeah, I think that we're talking about the classes, right? I think what it really matters mostly is actually how good are they in the beginning. Uh, and also, of course, to some extent, the combination, right, of all the classes. So the second thing is that in this game, I think it's very important thing about when you pick your class, very, very important thing about, regardless of the tier list or whatever, is that you will get companions, right? Spoilers here. These are your main companions. You also have all the companions in the game, right? But this is also kind of the guys you will find on this, this guy here. And what that means is that they have one class each, and I would say automatically that you probably should play one of the other classes. You don't have to, of course. You can play the Barbarian, you can play the Rogue and so on, right? But, you know, yeah, very minor spoiler, right? You will pick up a rogue, you know what I mean? You will pick up a warlock, right? So in my latest playthrough, I am playing the paladin. You won't ever get, like, a paladin companion here in the middle of the game. That has more value to it, to some extent, right? The bard also is the one, right? But anyway, before we go into the classes, let's just quickly discuss some of the race stuff. And if you guys like this video, please share it to someone, right? And... If you get, I don't know, if it's, if it's a lot of likes or whatever, I do, I guess, a race video as well. But I think, yeah, speaking here, race isn't that important, right? Both in real life and in this game. No, but race isn't that important, okay? The racial stuff doesn't matter that much. Uh, I genuinely think that you can play any class with any race as they beat the game right, and even a tactician. And it's probably more interesting in playing RP, like pick the race you want to play as, I would say. That being said, though, of course, there are some things that are very, very clear, right, with races. So let's go really quickly here. So first of all, short characters like Gnome, Dwarf, Halfling, right, they have minus two movement speed because they're tiny and short. Right? I think it's kind of a funny thing, but yes, they can move much shorter. That definitely feels in the game. That's a big feel to it. That being said, though, Gnomes have this uh, re-roll on uh, Persuasion and so on, which is very, very powerful, Charisma and so on. Half legs has been better with the real roll on um, lucky attacks. This is probably the best passive in the game. So they kind of make up for it, right, with that. And dwarves instead have better systems. So they are dwarf paladin and so on. So they can tank, right? They don't have to be that fast. They can jump and stand in the tank. Can be pretty useful. So if you play like a halfling ranger or something like that, right, which I am right now here, then it's really good because you have the beneficial passive. You don't move that much anyway, so you can also play, you know, uh, Warlock or whatever, yeah, like ra range basically, right? That's pretty good, it's a huge thing. Orcs has a very good passive, which they uh, do more damage than quits, right? But it only works for melee attacks. So I am also playing an Orc Monk, as much as my third character. That's very, very effective. Uh, generally speaking, right, Orcs are probably the best race for, like, you know, uh, fighter, barbarians, or right, of course, and monk then, like, you know, physical guys. My paladin, for example, is a tiefling, which gives her reduced damage from fire. So that's pretty good. So the other races, I feel, they don't really matter that much, honestly. No, elf, tiefling, human, they kind of have, you know, it's like the race a bit aren't that powerful. Basically, like, oh, you can see in the dark. Well, that's useful at the specific situation where you have to see in the dark, right? Otherwise, it's useless, right? Oh, you take half damage from fire? Obviously, that's useful against a dragon based that's fire, red dragon or whatever, right? Otherwise, it's useless, right? So, half the ratio in the game, at least, are pretty useless because they're very situational. 
the only work like one one every tenth fight or you know whatever right so it doesn't, i don't think it matters that much but there are of course i mentioned a few really clear examples like the orc one is probably the most clear where orcs are a lot better as uh, melee uh, than they are in range right and last thing i say about race is that human bard is probably the most versatile thing you can be so human even has this passive called human versatile or versatility and uh, yeah so bard a very versatile class you can pick stuff and so on right Fights are very versatile, and human can do kind of a little bit of everything, so yeah, that, <laughs> that's kind of thing. But anyway, so that is races then, right? They are pretty straightforward, doesn't matter that much. There are some clearly better racial benefits though, for most of it doesn't really matter. And of course you can mean max a bit, like as I mentioned, if you're playing Paladin, uh, Dwarf is pretty good because they got resistance to poison, or like I am Tiefling, Fire, that helps you out, you know. So you can pick that thing and when you pick your sub thing uh, for your race, some races you can be like, oh, I can either be faster or I can have slightly more, you know, defense points or and so on. Dwarf has more health points, right? It's one of the sub races, which is, of course, with a tank and so on. So there are some obvious better combinations there, but they don't matter that much. So now let's talk about classes. And the first thing you have to say, though, regardless of the class, is that Paladin, for example, Druid and so on, these I argue for are more valuable classes because these will not be in your normal companion. I mentioned earlier in the video, but here we go again, right? Paladin and Monk, Ranger, Druid, Bard, Sorcerer, you will not have in your starting party, right? This makes these classes more valuable because you know you, you won't have I, I, I think it's a straight argument, right? I, I really think so. Again, leave a comment below if you, if you agree with me. But I think that there is like one plus point, I think, easily to playing one of the classes that you won't have your companion with, right? And I want to spoil too much here. There are more companions than those initial companions in the game. But still, though, the companions you will find, right, from uh, the, the crash ship, so to speak, they are kind of like your, your main characters, right, for a long time. For the first, I don't know, 20, 30, I mean, depending how you play the game, but the point, like, obviously there for a long time. And... Yeah, you would have way more options as the playable character if you play the monk or the paladin or whatever, right? Uh, you play a class that they can't be, uh, definitely. But anyway, so I think that's a fair point for paladin. Like, I will probably put it one point higher for almost all of them. But let's talk about the paladin itself. Then. The paladin, I do think, is one of the best classes. Okay? I think it's a very good class. Uh, you can tank. It is obviously the best tanker in the game. Like the, the, the heavy guy. You can, you can take a fighter or so on too, right? Barbarians are what tanky. Monkey kind of dodge tank, of course. But uh, the Paladin is your go to better tank, right? Of course, you can also heal. Uh, he can heal himself, which is good. You can use Blessing on your team, which is really good. So you have better rolls. Uh, it's very good against Undead. Same with the Clerics. They both have like anti Undead thing, which is situational. But actually, I think that stuff in the game. Is less situational than for example dark vision. So dark vision is oh I can see in the dark, right? But being anti undead is really good for both cleric and paladin because you can go to a dungeon early in the game, right? And use undead and can you can you know kill them all easily, right? And so on. Because so being good against a typical type of enemy, paladin and good against undead again and fiends, right? Uh, means you can get and go and farm them, right? Because the way you play the game. I would argue for, right? Especially on Tactician. This video is, again, for Tactician, right? For the hard difficulty. Is that you take the fights that are easy, you know what I mean? So if you play a main Paladin, you would obviously go around and do all the quests, right? That are anti-undead, right? Because then you get more XP and gold and so on, right? And that's going to help a lot, right? So that whole anti-type thing is actually fairly powerful in the game. Because obviously, you play Tactician again, so you're smart enough, right, to go after the easier fights in the game. Uh, I think it's a big thing, actually. So that's also beneficial paladin's got uh so the charisma thing uh, also worthwhile to mention here is that we can't only look at the class based on their uh how say it combat problems right so paladins get stronger by uh, charisma uh, and which means it's very good uh for i think charisma is the best that to have right when you're out adventuring in the world you just want to talk to people, right? And coincidence, whatever, right? So persuasion and so on is very, very powerful. Paladin, because you have the Paladin, Oath, Persuasion combo and so on. So Paladins are, Paladins and Bards, I would say, are arguably the best two classes. But Paladin arguably is the best class to have good, you know, roll dice against uh, different people in things and so on. Which actually is very, very powerful, especially 
on again then petition on hard mode because you can avoid so many fights as the paladin by having high charisma which buffs your spells somewhat but also makes it easy to talk to them and then you can of course you know uh, get xp and so on right, by just talking down everyone so it helps a lot actually um but yeah i think paladin is a fairly good class it's kind of good with everything and like i said it also is a beneficial bonus for not being in one of the or original characters right so druid so druid is very very powerful it is very well of Warcraft to me. It's always the goddamn druids, man. They can do everything. No, but druid is like the best. Druid is arguably the best character in the game. Especially, I think, for early game. So there's one thing that makes the druid really broken. And that is that when they transform into an animal. You know, a bear or whatever. I think about Baldur's Gate. Yeah, the bear thing. But basically, right. When you turn into an animal with druid. And you die as an animal. The animal just, you know, you, you have full life again, yeah. It's just broken to me. It's just pretty broken, right? So basically, the health points of your animal form and the health point of your druid character are completely separate, right? So this is incredibly powerful in the game because you will very rarely die then, right, with tanking as a druid. We make it the best tank, basically. And this is especially early game where you have a lot of these flimsy fights and you survive with like five health points and you go heal again and so on. The druid is really good beginning of the game it's fun it's extremely powerful to have that shape forming thing right um so yeah it, it's fantastic and i think that later in the game right it definitely kind of becomes weaker of course because then the other class like paladin is a better tank you know overall but especially early and mid game the animal tanking is the best thing for you basically uh, arguably maybe the rain or whatever but like yeah it's like some animal summoning but now nah, it's, it's just amazing it's broken and then of course druid also has a lot of environment abilities and i have to say here in the list right i value environment stuff really highly in this game this goes for wish sword and warlock and so on right etc they have sorcerers yeah they have very powerful to have say to do different combos right you know the grease thing freezing different clouds or whatever all this stuff is what you really need i would say on titian it is very hard i feel to use the physical characters they do more damage, but most fights, because you know enemies are so much stronger in on hard mode, you have to really utilize a kind of like, for example, the warlock can throw an AOE spell that's much more effective, and then you you know you kite the enemies through it, right? That's way more effective than having like a physical fighter or barbarian or whatever usually. So um, the druid also having a plethora of great like crowd control abilities, right? Uh, environment a bit we call it and then also being this like really weirdly good tank it really feels like world of warcraft to me you know i come from playing a lot of world of warcraft and in world of warcraft do it do everything it's like yeah yeah it's like the wait a wait, minute wait, yeah uh, in certain patches of, of wolf right the druid was the best class in everything too basically especially in arena for a while it's like oh the cat druid is better than rogues and damage or so on and also yeah druids can you know they can stealth just like in wolf yeah they can stealth with cat or so on so yeah they're they're broken man they're broken. They're probably too good at everything. Uh, as always, right? So, yeah, so Druid is probably the best class. And also the benefit of not being uh, one of the starter classes. Let's take Monk. What is it? The Monk guy. There, it's five hands. Monk is also very powerful. But honestly, I think Monk is like here, maybe. In the end. <sighs> Monk is hard. Because Monk is very, very powerful in the beginning of the game. So on level 1, Monk is the best class in the game I've been working for. Like, probably easily the best class in the game. You start playing the game, so that's a massive benefit. But Monk really scales badly, I think, in some ways. It kind of falls under Paladin. But it's somewhere here because the Monk is, like I said, right, the best class in the game on um, on level one. Because you have like double attack immediately, so you can just go in there and like flurry one punch. You, can, you, you basically can Saitama every enemy, right? Yeah. The Monk does so much more damage than the, other class. Then the Monk has insanely high damage, basically. On, uh, on on level one, yeah, it's in crazy high, right? And one game I compare it to is Seven Sega. Seven Sega is an old SNES game. It's like the hardest role playing game to SNES. It's so hard this game. It's absurd, okay? And it's actually harder in Europe instead of Japan. Yeah, Japan is easier. But anyway, in this game, then uh, it's very D&D actually. You pick seven different you know classes slash creatures, right? And so on. It's very kind of open world. The adventure runs so on. It's incredibly hard this game. Absurd. Uh, but anyway. You see the robot over me? That robot, he has no items, right? This robot can't use any gear. He's only like, he's like an old mecha. So he's basically the monk of the game. And also the alien down here also has no gear. 
These two characters are by far easiest character in this game, right? It's a very, very typical trend, I think in RPGs for the last 30 years, right? That basically the Robo Monk character, right? Is the best at level one, right? Because he has no items, so he's obviously his base stats are insanely high than everyone else. And then late game, the mech guy is also the best character because he scales further, right? In the mid game, he's worse because you get legendary items there, right? But in late game, he's the best again because, you know, you, you overscale, right? That being said, though, in the last act of this game, the two healers in this game, the old man, the wizard, and the elf lady, were actually the best two characters. I don't want to spoil why, but you play the game, you know, if you play this game, you know why, yeah. The last act in this game is so incredibly different that having the buffer characters are much, much better, but the best combo is having the Robo Mecha monk robot with one of the buffers, so they can buff him, and that's the best combo. But anyway, back to Baldur's Gate. My point, of course, is that the monk really fulfills that classic role, right, where, well, you know, on level one, I'm super OP because I have bonus armor, bonus damage, all the stuff, right? And even the, I don't know, the first three, four levels, the monk still does the highest damage, then of course he eventually gets outscaled, right? Because you keep you, you keep finding better items and so on. And then the monk can't really use much items. And so then he gets worse and worse, right? But early game, he's very, very powerful. And then he still keeps being quite powerful. But I think he's kind of weak late game though. But he's definitely the easiest mode for Titian. Because you can like one shot almost every enemy in the middle of the game. Or like two shot up. He can do several punches at the same time, right? But but anyway, now let's talk to Sorcerer. So Sorcerer is another than class you won't get in the game, right, normally. And the Sorcerer is also very powerful. Um, Sorcerer is kind of weird. I put it maybe here somewhere. Sorcerer is powerful, but also not really... So the way they work is that they basically buff one spell that you have, right? And they make it better. It's like, it's like they kind of like, they're, they're, they're similar to, you know, like the other spellcasters. But instead, they improve a few of them. So, like, you can do instead of throwing one fireball, you throw two fireballs. You know what I mean? And the benefit of that is a bit higher, actually, because you do run out of spells, right? So, in Baldur's Gate, you have to rest all the time to get the spells back. And the Sorcerer is very good at, like, oh, I can, like, make my basic spell, basically, right? Or, like, my more, you know, base spells uh, better. And they're more spammable. So, so, they can have magic for a longer time, which is quite useful. So, that's pretty good. But they have these really weird traits, and you have the, the Chaotic Sorcerer, which is the classic D&D, the, the Ram Sorcerer, which arguably is the best class for, uh, how say, Tisha, right? Because you can basically randomize a fight. But I find it lame, but sure. I mean, honestly, in a way, Sorcerer is the best class, right? Because if you play Chaotic Random Sorcerer, which is a subclass of them, you can basically take any boss and just hope for the best result right, with your random stuff, right? And it might be much more effective. And they can just reload if it fails, right? So they're also the most abusive class. Let's do Warlock, because Warlock, I feel, is basically a better sorcerer. So everything I said with Sorcerer, or the general issue, right, with spellcasting, is that you run out of mana, right? You run out of books, basically. You don't really have mana in the game, in D&D. It's more that you have, you know, a number of I you can throw, like, three fireballs or whatever, right? They need to rest. But the Warlock has a much better economy of being able to throw a spell, they're kind of regaining it. So, I think easily here, for that matter, right? The Warlock is much better than Wizard. So, Wizard is like here somewhere, honestly. Because the Wizard and Warlock, they fulfill a very similar role in the game, I think. And But Warlocks do it better, because they have much better economy for spells, right? And then also, Warlock has better reactive spells. Especially with Vilden. I won't spoil too much, but you get like, I can do this counter and so on, yeah. So they have better like counter stuff. They can turn off enemies' reactions. And they... Like the AOE in the environment effects, I mentioned earlier, is very powerful in the game. Um, Warlock has that too. Wizard has slightly better, I suppose, environment effects than Warlock. But only by a little. But then the Warlock has, again, then better economy, right? Like better regaining spells. And also much better passives, more or less than Wizard has. Like all of them better. So I, I, do, I really feel the Warlock is a much better Wizard. And the Sorcerer, I feel is a better Wizard. <laughs> because the Sorcerer is like... Like I mentioned, right, they have the economy of the spells and uh, better and so on, but they don't have the much environment stuff, but it still is better. Um, so, I, yeah, I feel the wizard, I play with the wizard, right, and the wizard, I always basically always remove the wizard from my party, I feel, uh, in my different playthroughs, because even though, again, I, I think the environment effects are very powerful, the wizard really feels like you have one fight with him, right, uh, the wizard companion, with his name again, Wade, yeah, and you use him once in a fight, 
and then you use up all your spells, right? And then the next fight, he's like, oh, I can throw fireballs. You know what I mean? Like, he's, if he's very much like, you basically have to either save all of his spells, right? To the boss, basically. Or use it immediately and be a dungeon. They have to rest, you know? Yeah, it's super annoying. Where the wall, like, is much better at actually, again, than reusing spells. And the sorcerer, while not as good, as I said, at, like, regaining spells as warlock, has better basic spells. And in the end of the game, or end of the day, whatever you call it, you're gonna spam... So basically, if you have a wish service or swatcher, right, most of the fights, you're gonna spam, like, say, fireball, right? So what do you rather have? A wish sword that spam one fireball, or a sorcerer that is spamming two fireballs, right? Obviously, the best better than sorcerer. Of course, the wish has a better AOE and so on, once per rest, right? Yeah, so they're, but they're like once per time, and if I wanna have, like, five or six or ten or whatever fights before I rest, right, then obviously I think the wish is way worse, but that being said, though, the wish is probably better early game because when you start playing the game, you probably rest a lot. You go in and out, in and out of resting, I would say. Depending on what your class you play. If you play monk, you can steamroll everything. But, you know what I mean? So you probably have to rest more in the beginning. It doesn't really matter that much. But, yeah, I think especially if you're between the mid game, you start having a lot of spells. Certainly, the wish sword and so on, will last longer before you spend your, your better spells. But still, though, yeah, then it's like, you usually want to go a lot of fights before you're resting, right? You don't want to spam rest all the time and so on, no. So I think that that is, uh, yeah, then uh, the Wish Star is probably the weakest spell class. Then we have the Cleric. The Cleric, I think, is somewhere here. So the Cleric is interesting because they are similar to the Wizard. Which I don't think you have that many useful spells uh, per fight. I mean, I mean, in sense, in the same way as the wizard, right? You know, like, like you have a few good spells, but then you use them, and you have to wait the whole fight until you can order the whole rest period, right? So either you rest a lot, or you have a few spells you use all the time. That being said, though, I think they are a better wizard because they also have environment stuff, they have AOE stuff, but they also can heal, of course. So the cleric guess, is pretty powerful class because. Yes, they can do pretty decent damage, not as much as the Wizard of the Warlock or so on, but they can also heal, right? And they also have more buffs, they have the Blessing, they have the, the, the weaker Blessing, but it's a free extra one. So they can buff you guys, they can heal them, they can remove stuff, and they also can wear heavy armor stuff. So they're pretty tanky, right? They kind of, they're very, they're kind of close to the Paladin though. If you have the Paladin class, I don't think they're as useful, right? If you're playing a Paladin yourself. That synergy of cleric and pal isn't very good, uh, honestly. They kind of fulfill both the same thing, like holy magic, right? But they kind of like you know, like a they're like a mixture between paladin and wizard sort of that. Oh, let's do ranger. Ranger is probably up here somewhere. Yeah, the ranger is a very powerful class, right? So the ranger, it kind of fulfills the same role that we talked about, right? Kind of spellcaster. That's why I bring it up now, right? Because they're kind of similar to again the warlock, the and so on, right? Because they're throwing range moves, right? You know, they're, they're throwing their attacks from a distance, obviously, the rangers. However, the ranger, of course, doesn't have the weakness, right? That the spell caster has. So I'm very, but, but honestly, I do think that you have to constantly go out of mana, basically, right? With your spell caster is a big issue for the game, or a big issue for the game, but I mean, for, you know, your fights, right? Especially in some fights later in the game, where you have like a lot of enemies, 20 whatever enemies, right? Like a huge fight. And even if you go in there rested, you're gonna run out of your best spells basically after two, three turns, right? Yeah, it is some place like that. Uh, that being said, obviously, you can still kill some people and so on, right? But I do think that it is like, yeah, like the range you're just being able to shoot stuff, having high range damage, but basically no penalty, right? Uh, for that, it's really, really powerful. Of course, they also have their own skills, right? But, you know, they kind of, their average damage is higher than like, uh, Whatever, wizard or whatever, right? The rainier is powerful because you can summon an animal and it can fight for you, or you can recruit an animal, whatever like that. And it will fight for you, and that's very, very, very powerful at lower level. The warlock can also summon like an imp or whatever, which is somewhat valuable. But the rainier can summon pretty powerful animals, and that actually has a uh, yeah, tremendous value for the early levels. And similar to the monk or whatever, right? This is much stronger early game, and then definitely kind of, you know, becomes less as effective late game, right? But it still is powerful, they have higher skills and so on, and they also have a little bit of, you know, tricks and so on as well, right, at their sleeves. And lastly, the Rainier, similar to the Paladin, can kind of pick your enemy, 
I guess call it. But basically, they can like, oh, I'm a hunter of this thing, right? Oh, I'm I'm hunting like I don't know beast. I'm hunting demons or whatever. Right? So you can pick that as well. And let's say earlier with the pad in argument, that means that you can then of course go and do the quests, right? That are particularly good for you because you you are ranging hunting specifically, let's say beast, right? So you're very good at killing beast, which now makes it much easier for you. Much easier, but it's somewhat easier, right? You can have sisters or one, so it's definitely easier. If you plan it out, the bard, if we get into the fantasy classes. So, bard also a really good class, I feel. And I probably put bard up here somewhere. Bard is pretty powerful, right? So, the bard is, of course, the most versatile class. I mentioned earlier, if you're playing human versatile bard, you're incredibly versatile. The bard is like a spellcaster that can do a little bit of everything, right? Uh, one thing I like with bard a lot is that they can use their like buffing abilities in fights and so on. But they can also use them outside of fights. So I mentioned earlier that the paladin is very powerful in one way because you will have, you should have at least very high charm, right? Charisma, you know, paladin. And they can use different persuasion and so on, right? Uh, with the devotion thing, and paladins are probably the best class to get really high rolls, and then in that way you can like avoid half the fights in the game as a paladin. But bard is probably the second best or the better than right? So. They kind of equally, they're both the best two classes, I would say, right? To get, get through not having to fight people, <laughs> which is a big thing, I think. Especially, again, if you're playing on hard mode, you know, tradition, right? He avoiding a fight is, of course, even more valuable. Because you get XP anyway and so on. Or you can get XP and then still kill them, right? But you can maybe, you know, set up a kill, you know, you can persuade them. Then you enter the dungeon, right? And you stab the boss in the back and run away, you know what I mean? You can, you can do more stuff with that. So, yeah. Um, these different charm abilities are very good in this game. And I keep saying it, but yeah. Paladin and Bard are the two classes that benefit from that the most. And the thing with Bard then is that, like I said, they can buff you and so on, right? With your spells. But also, the same spell, or basically say whatever, uh, can also be used uh, outside battle, right? So they can like buff, buff themselves or an ally, think about it. But usually yourself, so you can buff yourself and then talk to people in city, right? With kind of the same ability. So basically, it increases the song is like either better for a fight or better for inside the city. So it's quite, it's very useful. Again, very versatile, right? And then you can learn other skills and so on. So yeah, the bard, is, the bard is a great character, I think. It's um, honestly probably the best spellcaster. I, I always see bard as yeah spellcaster, and I I probably would say that bard is like the best spellcaster of the game. Probably. And actually probably put them higher than Monk. Uh, especially like mid and late game. Maybe even higher than Paladin. But I think Paladin still fulfills one thing by being the best tank in the game is all right. And also having like the best heals basically. That are cleric. But the, the, the Paladin healing is more spammable. So actually the Paladin is probably the best healer. Especially mid game. Uh, but anyway yeah. Bard. Very powerful I think. And honestly I keep saying it. But I definitely recommend you know. These classes that they kind of are also not, no one in your party is gonna have this class either. So the bard is actually probably really fun to play and so on. It's kind of funny now that I put all the new I put all the non companion classes. I realize I realize I realize that right now. But I put all <laughs> Jesus Christ, guys. I realize that honestly, it wasn't even on purpose. This was not on this was not on purpose. But I re, I re, I, re, uh, I give an extra plus four if they're not one of your party companions, right? But now I realize I basically have ordered all the, the, the best classes as the people you don't start with. But well, but honestly, I feel it's kind of true because the druid is broken, rain is kind of broken, uh, monk highest damage early game, you know, paladin and bard best character for like persuasion and kind of general NPC stuff. And also, you know, good team guys and so on, best tanking or best supporting. So, yeah, it's actually, it's fairly, they all kind of fairly like this, Jesus Christ. <laughs> but anyway, that's pure accident, talking about the last classes in the game. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, like I put all the, you know, non-NPC classes on the best ones, yeah. Um, anyway, fighter, I put somewhere here, okay. I'm not a big fan of the fighter, and I feel it's a worse bard. So, the thing is that the fighter and the bard are very, very similar, okay? They're both basically like, I can do a little bit of everything, right? And, but the fighter is like, how do I say it? The fighter is like that, fast, but for melee, right? You know, but for physical stuff. And the bard is that for, for, for magic, right? And the magical stuff is, of course, I would say honestly, much better, obviously. Because if I can do a little bit of every magic, that's very, very, you know, versatile, right? If I can do a little bit of every physical attack, 
uh, it's not really that useful. You can just play another physical class to do more damage, right? Uh, the fighter has this thing too that when you level them up, they basically get to pick like a little bit of everything. Oh, I can be like a medical fighter, so I can hit with magic stuff, like the paladin, right? Oh, I can be a little more tanky, or I can have this thing, or I can hit more, or whatever, yeah. Or I can have better crits, or whatever. So that's pretty good if you're an orc and have But it just feels like they really feel they're not good at anything, really. The only thing they got going for them is a double attack, so they can do two attacks. But the barbarian can also do a double attack thing when you're fencing. And then both the Paladin and the Barbarian also get double attacks uh, right on in the game. But of course, the fighter gets four attacks and if they have specific usage. Well. But I see if it's a bit of bad. And also, we come into Barbarian now then. But the Barbarian, they also have like, they can throw people and so on. And actually, Enraged Throw is actually very, very powerful. The thing is that I feel that Barbarian Fighter at many levels are roughly the same with two attack each. But the Baron do more damage, so that's better. The Baron is tankier with the normal like rage thing going on, like without that any good gear. So you should tank it anyway. And then the Barbarian basically has better abilities because the Barbarian can throw people, like I mentioned. And the throwing is actually very powerful. So you, tr you take an enemy and you throw them away at them. That's the one best abilities in the game. Because sometimes you can just kill them straight up. You can grab an enemy, throw them out the field. You can also push them down with Volk or so on. But yeah, <laughs> that's really powerful. But taking some enemies and throwing it in order, that also sets up your AoEs for the other characters. So the Barbarian, I think, is like a much better fighter in my opinion. I think Barbarian is like just a lot better than the fighter. And I probably put Barbarian also over um, the, the Warlock. I think the Monk still might be better than Barbarian because they're both like physical guys. But again, the monk is like really broken early game. Yeah, it's like so good on level one, level two and three and so on. Like and I know it's better, but still, you know, if you're gonna play this, look at this list, right? You're gonna play a new game, right? You're gonna play this game for the first time, hard mode, teaching mode. Again, the monk, I, I, I stand firm saying that the monk is the best class if you're a new player. Because the monk is just completely broken on level one, two and three and so on, yeah. And that has value, right? You can steamroll everything with the monk. You're like, yeah, and you just, you will like you will like kill everything. I mentioned again, but basically with the monk on level one, any enemy you can reach, right? You, you, you can double attack them immediately, and then basically you always kill them. Like that is incredibly broken. And you can basically combo any enemy to death, right? That's that's really really powerful. That is true for like the, maybe the first five ten hours of the game or something. So it's gonna make the game much easier. If you play the monk, right? And that's not true for the fight, the barbarian or whatever. It's not true for the other fight lads. For the, not for the paladin either. Um, but so the monk had that going for them. Extremely powerful without any gear right there. And like I said earlier, again, the monks are a typical archetype in a video game, right? Which, you know, they, they're more higher base stats, right, to speak. So, of course, they're going to be better in being at the game because you don't, don't need gear to be powerful, right? Which is very, very good. Uh, so yeah, I think they're I think they're better than the barbarian, but then like I said, the barbarian throw was actually one of the OPs a bit in the game. The barbarian got the cleave, got the enrage chain. He cannot tank it. He cannot can keep going. Uh, I like having my barbarian with uh, what's it called? Yeah, Sentinel. Yeah, so I run up with uh, Kush, her name Kushelra, whatever they pronounce. The barbarian in the game, you run up with her and she hits them and they move next to her or something like that. It's Opportunity striking and that stuff, right? And yeah, she's and honestly, the best companion is probably her, Cash Cashel or whatever it is. Yeah, this is probably the best companion. If I if I make a companion uh, list, right, I would probably say that she's the best companion. This is your companions, right? And I would I would probably say that Car Carless. <laughs> but yeah, she's probably the best companion. I think so straight up. Yeah, the bar she's a barbarian, you know, great passives and so on. Yeah, she's probably is the best. But anyway, they kind of argue what I think barbarian is better than the fighter, and it's roughly the as good as the monk. Like I said, I think the monk is better early game, but maybe at level five or six or so, the barbarian gets better than the monk. It's so somewhere around. Yeah, it's somewhere around here. And I've seen people argue that a good class in the game should be the hybrid thing. Where you're playing either as you know whatever, and then you you know do the cross thing. So at high level in the game, you can pick up a subclass, right? And then you, if you want to, and then you can get like some of the passive of this thing. And but that already was broken. But some people argued that the best class would be barbarian, 
sub mine right? So you have like no armor and you get both the bones of having no armor on both of them. But in theory, yeah, it sounds really powerful. So they're kind of similar to other. They're very, yeah, definitely kind of similar. And lastly then, the rogue. Now the rogue is probably A T. They're all interesting, right? It's S S T or S T A T like the rogue is very interesting because it is like the stealth king, right? And but I think the rogue is very <laughs> the rogue is very interesting because honestly because it's like if you're playing as the rogue, it really gives you another kind of gameplay, right? Because the rogue is that character, if you play as a personal rogue, is that kind of character where you probably don't wanna use your companion much, right? You just wanna go up yourself and like stab people and do it. And now there is a rogue of course uh, companion, but it's like you kinda just play it by yourself, right? If you wanna play this game and solo the game with only one with no companions, which is probably doable. I think mean, I haven't tried, but I would assume that the rogue by far is the best class to solo the game, right? And in that sense, as well as having the Minecraft, the rogue's also a much better early game character, okay? The, the, while everything said the monkey is true, that the monkey is like super OP damage, right? The rogue can also basically go up to someone, you know, backstab them, right? And fight over it. Um, so, of course, in a lot of instances in the earlier part of the game, you only have like two, three enemies. The rogue can like one shot one enemy immediately, right? They have two enemies left. Uh, and perhaps you can kill them as well or whatever. But I mean, even if you can half ass stealth it, right? You can do that. You can also, of course, as a rogue, you can go in. Kill an enemy and then of course run out, right? You can escape. So if you want to play that game where you like kill one mid boss and then run out, kill one mid boss and then kill the boss or whatever, that kind of thing, right? Then the rogue is there for you, right? That being said, though, I think the rogue is a little bit bad class in sense because it really forces you to play in a different way, right? And I guess people really would like that. But, uh, but I also think it's true that the rogue isn't very good in the game in a sense because you have to play the rogue, you know what I mean? So if you are as a main cat, you're the rogue, right? Now you're gonna have to play everything like, oh, I have to stealth. I don't have to, but you know point. If you really are that, you probably have to kind of play it like, I'm gonna stab this, I gotta do this. Like, <laughs> you have to play the game very differently to make it effective. And if you like that, I mean, that's fine, right? But at the same time, I would argue that the rogue is bad in a way because you're forced, right, to play every encounter like that. Similar to the paladin, right? The rogue gives you, like, basically an NPC option, right? Where, as I said earlier, the Paladin arguably is the best class to, you know, persuade them, right? So you actually, like, you don't have to fight them, you can just persuade them. The Rogue is that, you can obviously kill them. <laughs> yeah, the Rogue is that, it's like, you don't, you don't persuade them, you just kill them instead. But it's very similar, right? Both the Rogue and the Paladin are actually probably the best to class them, right? To avoid having to have a real fight against a lot of bosses, right? Because, again, you can either convince them to join you or whatever, right? Or you can kill them and then run away, right? So... They kind of fulfill the same role there. Of, I mean, obviously, it's done, it's done very differently, but I think it actually is quite similar uh, from an effect standpoint, right? You know what I mean? Well, and also the rogue, because you're better team and so on. This is, of course, true for the monk as well as so the one if you have high dexterity, but uh, usually the rogue, right? You can also steal stuff, right? You can, like, rob, you can, you know, you can, you can mug someone, right, on the city and take the keys or whatever, so on. So there's a lot of benefit there, too. So honestly, the rogue is. Yeah, the rogue is probably the best class in the game, or second best class in the game. Maybe even better than the druid. Um, don't think about it. But I think the druid is so broken in the game. The druid is weird, yeah. I mean, maybe I just have that full PTSD, but I do feel the, ro the druid can do everything. And also, like I said, everything I use with the rogue right, with the stealth thing and so on, the druid can be the cat and do that. Yeah, it's not as good, but you know, sometimes with the druid, you can still also do that. You're second like Jesus Christ, yeah, you can still be the cat thing and <laughs> commit to that. So, <laughs> now I have to give it to the druid. I think that it is the mo the biggest thing is that, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, that the druid doesn't lose health. For me, it's just broken, man. That's just so broken, guys. I mean... Yeah, if you die in your beer form, you should die as a druid, right? And maybe if the game would be like, if you revert back to druid form, I mean to human form or whatever, from, from, from animal form, you would then, I don't know, have less life or something, or... I don't know, but it's weird to me that you can you can set up a die that also protects you from doing mistakes, and also, this is overkill thing, right? So some bosses, this is a thing for an enemy video game, some bosses will do, you know, insanely high damage, right? They will hit you for like 500,000 damage for every point. They will do insane high damage, but that is overkill. And I mean with that is that, imagine you're playing a druid, right? And you run up to a boss and the boss just one-shots you. 
uh, and then you, but you don't die, right? Because you have two lives. You have your animal form and your druid form, right? So the axe is very useful because in a, actually, I think in any game, you know, I mean, that is incredibly useful. In my point, it's like the only way to like rescue yourself from a mistake, right? If you play in perfect hall. And I feel druid in a similar way there is like, well, this boss is very powerful. So sometimes if you face this in a boss that is higher level than you, right? And you know to do really, really high damage, but maybe you only have the boss to fight because you killed the other guys or whatever, right? So you run with Druid, right? Tank him with Druid, Druid dies immediately, but then you all DPS the boss immediately at the same time, and then you win, right? But if you played, you know, with a non-Druid, they will get insta-killed, they have one dead character, and it's gonna be super annoying, yeah, that kind of stuff is just, it's just really beneficial. Plus then, you know, all the fungus and environment, and I think the Druid is better than the Rogue, but the Rogue has to still be up there, I feel. It's either S tier or A tier. Because it really does open up for the whole stealth thing. You can stealth with other characters too, but obviously the rogue is by far the best stealth. And it's, it's like an option for a whole lot of kind of gameplay, right? Uh, I feel sorry for the wish on that, but I do think the wish actually is pretty bad because while they have the most spells, I do feel you run out of them immediately. And you sit there and it's just like, oh yeah, that's 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 not good. Um, like I said, the fighter, I think it's pretty bad actually. I think it's the worst physical class in the game. Uh, I don't. I don't think it does much more than the barbarian does. And again, the throw with the barbarian much better. Paddy is a better tank, and I can also heal, and has a really good healer. Uh, Sorcerer, maybe slightly higher. I don't know. I think it's pretty good. The sorcerer, yeah. They kind of like okay, the little better spell, but not really that good. Uh, cleric, you know, it's a better wizard arguably. It's a bit more healing, and so on. But I think the paddy is a better healer actually. I think the paddy fulfills what the cleric does for healing if you just want to have a healer. Um, Wall, as I mentioned, is probably the best, like, basic spellcaster for our spam stuff, right? Uh, Barbarian, yeah, probably the, the best is straight up physical class. Uh, late game and so on. The monk then, broken as hell, right? Early game, kind of mid later, but it also gives a tank and so on. So, yeah, they're, they're kind of. But as I said, like, you know, it's the best class that any gear and it has all of, also have high value. Uh, the bard then is probably the best uh, spellcaster in the game. Unless they call, unless they can't do it for that, but yeah, it's like they're really good at everything. Uh, Paladin, it's the tank class, it's the healing class, it's the best NPC class, arguably. So yeah, got a bunch of stuff going on there. And then of course the Ranger being the, you know, similar druid. <laughs> so yeah, just like the best DPS class from range, right? The most, the most consistent DPS class from range, definitely. Um, and just having like a tank animal and so on, animal talking, you can track different things and so on. Yeah. And then I mentioned of course Rogue is just like, yeah, you have your own complete new gameplay, the stealth thing, opens up a lot of options, you can steal stuff, you can steal items, you can steal keys, you know, and even quest items and so on, very, very powerful. And of course the Druid is being amazing at everything, but I think the Druid is classic, right? I keep saying it, but the Druid is like, uh, it's just too good at everything, right? Obviously Druid should be a little bit of everything. Classic druids, but it's like A plus and everything, and that's probably too good. It should probably be B plus and everything. And then the whole animal thing makes it really broken, I think. So that's it, guys. What do you guys think? Leave a comment below. Hope you guys have to start playing the game right for the Titian. But I think, especially, and I say it lastly, then, they're kind of my quick up But I say it lastly, right? This is mostly, of course, a, a list for you, right? Who you should play. Uh, we can make another list with like combos, right? Synergies, what your team should be. But I think that especially when I would say the wizard is as a bad choice for you to be. So you get a wizard, right? He's a decent wizard guy. But if you have two wizards, nah, you don't want to have two wizards. I think that's really bad, okay? Like having two wizards means that you have very low DPS, right? Because you have one, they have two guys that basically will be like, oh, I will throw my spells. Then it, I keep saying it, but then you have orb, right? Your other man immediately, and then you can't do much. So having two wizards in your team is a terrible synergy. That's what I'm thinking about too, because yeah, then I don't want to have two wizards. I have one wizard always, right? I have the weird guy, so if I have, if I want a wizard in my team, I pick him, right? You know what I mean? Sorcerer is a lot better than that. However, like two warlocks, I could easily see myself playing two warlocks. I, I've done it. I mean, I'm ready. But I mean, two warlocks the whole game, that's still playable because warlock is a really good class. That's still playable. Honestly, I talk myself up here, okay? I want to put sorcerer higher than cleric because. Cleric, in a similar way, I don't want to have two Cleric in my party. Like, I don't want to have two Wizards. So, I, Shadowheart, Shadow Cleric, whatever, right? Sorcerer, 
you don't get a social companion in the beginning of the game. So if I have if I want a sorcerer, I have to beat myself, yeah. Uh, but Shadow Heart is good enough for a cleric. Fighter, I do think by far is the worst physical class. Like it really is, so definitely at the bottom. Rogue companion, yeah, he's pretty good. I mean this rogue is really good, right? Um definitely. And yeah, Carly, yeah, I mean she's a barbarian and does stuff. It's just good. Um, but I think it's a worth thing talking about too that you don't want to have two wizard, you don't want to have two cleric. I can easily see cleric even at the C tier, honestly, because it's just like you don't want, yeah, honestly. I can almost see myself doing this thing because I can't, I just can't see. I have a very, very hard time seeing you building a team where you have, you know, you as a person, right, the, the player, plus Shadowheart or plus weight and also be in your class. Like that's not gonna happen. At least you can play two fighters, definitely. Because two physical fighters. You can play two barbarians. You can play two. You can play two warlocks. Absolutely. You can definitely play two rogues. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But you're not. You're gonna play like two. You're not gonna play two cleric two two two, two, two warlocks. So that is definitely lower. I yeah. But I think it's fair to say that because again, this list here is mostly to like who should you play right rather than who should your teammates be. That's another thing. But at the same time though, your teammates also shouldn't be too wizard. <laughs> on the same time. I think it's gonna even if you if even if you ignore it and say, oh be the dream team, I still think it would be terrible having two wizard on level 10. I never tried it, but it sounds really terrible. Yeah, like I don't wanna have two wizards, right? Or two clarity anyway. No, it's like really low DPS. You, you throw your spells once. I mean sure, there's some boss fights where it's really good. The only thing that's good with it is that there's some boss fights that are gonna be really easy for two wizard because you enter and you just throw your amazing abilities at them at the same time in combo and they all die. So of course there are some benefits, absolutely. And there are some like huge fights with a lot of enemies. And if you if you have massive AoE power strike, you're gonna just kill everything immediately. So there is some benefit to it, absolutely, some situations. But it just seems like then you have to take a rest immediately afterwards. <laughs> it's gonna be like, okay, bam, and I'm like, okay, we need to go rest now. You won't be able to have more than one fight per rest, right? Yeah. It's gonna be so hard to play them. This is actually a problem more accurate. Because I do feel Sword Strike is, is, is wanted higher than Cleric. Maybe I even wanna put Wizard in Trash. Though. No, but I, I don't think anything is Trash, right? I don't think this game actually has a Trash tier. I think this is like, this is, this is it, guys. I feel this is the best tier list. Okay. What do you guys think? Please subscribe. Have a great day.